him out. Come on, hurry up! Where the hell are we? Oh! <laughs> 
Up here, hurry! says, well, you better tickle mine, too, because now i got to catch the goddamn thing. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. To a job? Well done. Yeah. Are you going to join us, darling? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the map proves it. Drake didn't screw around in the East Indies for six months. He sailed straight through and headed to Arabia. Right. But here's where it gets interesting. You see this, Mark? This is John D.'s signature. Who the hell's John D? John D, one of Queen Elizabeth's closest advisors. Everybody knows that. Yeah, yeah, he was a great mathematician and navigator. Okay, way ahead of his time. He's probably the one who invented that. Seriously into the occult. I mean, like a really creepy dog. Yeah, see, way. he signed all his letters to the Queen with this symbol, meaning he was her eyes. The original 007, you see, look, 007. Not really that relevant. So it was John D who sent Drake to Arabia? Yeah, it looks that way. D and Elizabeth. And Walsingham. Great, but what for? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? And this is where T.E. Lawrence comes in. See, before Lawrence became Lawrence of Arabia... Great film. He was an archaeologist. And even when he was just a kid, he was obsessed with history. Everything to do with knights and the Crusades. And he traveled all over, documenting every Crusader site he could find. It, it's all in here. All right, you've lost me completely, kid. What the hell has this got to do with Drake? I'm getting to that. See, after the war, Lawrence said that if he were ever to go back to Arabia, it would be to search for this place he called the Atlantis of the Sands. Now, the legend crops up over and over again under different names. Ubar, Aram of the Pillars, the City of Brass. But the story is always the same. Well, city of immeasurable wealth, destroyed by God for its arrogance, swallowed forever in the sands of the Rubel-Kali Desert. Right here. <laughs> I like the immeasurable wealth part, anyway. And you think this is what Elizabeth and Dee sent Drake after? Oh, yeah. And more importantly, it's what Marlow is after. So, wait. If Drake was on a mission from the Queen to find this place, why all the secrecy? I mean, it looks like he went to a lot of trouble to hide whatever he found, even from Her Majesty. I don't know. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, what was that? No, hang on a second, because if you recall the last time we went halfway around the world searching for a lost city, things got more than a little dicey. Yeah, but this time we have the upper hand. I mean, look, Drake only had half the clues, Lawrence only had half. We have both, and Marlowe has nothing. Small problem. The Rubel-Kali Desert, 600 miles across. The Bedouin go around the damn thing. And even if we knew where it was, which we don't, we would die trying to find Just it. Just hold on. You see these symbols here? Yeah. Looks like Sabian script. Sabian script. Right. Look, the Crusaders were searching for the same lost city a thousand years ago. But out of all the sites Lawrence documented, only two are marked with these symbols. One in Syria, the other in France. No, you two are going to Syria. We're heading to France. Look, we track down these clues. We find Lawrence's lost city. I'm sure of it. Well, and then what? How are we going to get across 600 miles of impossible wasteland? Well, it's in the middle of the desert. So technically, it'd be about 300 miles. Oh. <laughs> Look, I don't know. We'll figure it out. We burn that bridge when we get to it, eh? Exactly. What do you say? What the hell? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Into the line. 
done, I guess. Don't. <laughs> Looks like we're going the rest of the way on foot. <laughs> what? Leave it to you to find a friggin' jungle in the middle of France. <laughs> well, we're definitely headed in the right direction. Chateau should be this way. Not too far. Come on. Yeah. Not too far? <laughs> With you, I never know if that means a quarter mile or twenty. Like that time you got us lost in Peru? Oh, you really want to bring up Peru? <laughs> you are not still holding that open. I was 15, Sully. Should have known when I met you that I'd be in prison within a year. <laughs> you were headed that way all on your own, if you recall. <laughs> Besides, I got you out, didn't I? I always get you out. <laughs> Come on, through here. There it is, just like in Lawrence's notes. Gotta have more faith in me, Sully. Of course, I don't remember this ravine being on the map. Ah, oh, they must have just put that in. All right. Come on, we'll find another way around. Hey, is that a pan flute? This way. Watch your step. Whew. I don't know, kid. You sure we're in the right place? This doesn't seem old enough to be a crusader castle. It's more like a renaissance. You haven't been reading my books again, have you, Sully? <laughs> now, Lawrence says the original castle was built in the 11th century. The rest was added on later. This looks sketchy. Ooh. Look, Sully, your first car. Oh, man. That's a 1927 Auburn. this, Mr. Wizard? Lawn art? Pretty tacky. <laughs> now, the knight who owned this castle, Lord Godfrey, returned from the Crusades in the 12th century. Now, according to Lawrence, all that's left of the original castle is the square keep and the gardens. If Godfrey brought any secrets back from Arabia, that's where we're gonna find him. I'll try this door. Ah. It's no good? Not getting in this way. I bet I can climb up through that hole. Bet you can. Let me guess. You're gonna sit tight, smoke a cigar again. Yeah. All right, don't burn the place down. <laughs> <laughs> 